Welcome to City Connect, Shawnee's show that connects you and me with our city's government. Today, we're going to meet Don Lynch and Jennifer Powell, two city employees that make up Shawnee's Emergency Management Office. As we'll see though, the office doesn't make up the entire emergency management team. Vitally important work is done by citizen volunteers. And Don is going to talk to us about family preparedness in the event of an emergency. First up, we'll talk to our city manager, Jim Collard. I was born in Oklahoma, but I had the opportunity to live out of state for nearly two decades. During that time, I was, I was gratified to hear repeatedly the high regard that Oklahoma Emergency Management Services were held nationwide. We're especially lucky in Shawnee to have someone of the caliber of Don Lynch, our Emergency Management Director, working for us. He has not only a statewide reputation, but a national reputation, including serving on the faculty of the FEMA uh, school in uh, Maryland. The reason that's important for Shawnee, of course, is that Oklahoma is no stranger to natural disasters. Uh, and not only natural disasters such as tornadoes and ice storms, which we just recently endured, but also, uh, as the mural building has told us, the heartland is vulnerable to terrorist attacks. And as a result, uh, we always have to be on guard, so to speak not to the point that we're uncomfortable with our daily environment, but certainly to be aware of the possibilities. And as the often quoted statement, you know, diligence is the price of freedom, I think it's important that our emergency response team always be diligent and uh, persevere through the hard times and be constantly in a state of preparation so that our citizens uh, can be protected in those times of ugliness and hardship and and trial and tribulation that is inevitable as we go through our lives in this state. Uh, it's a great time to be in Oklahoma. It's a good time to be home. And I'm especially gratified to serve with the professionals uh, that are available uh, to us in uh, Shawnee, not only Don Lynch, but the members of the fire department, the police department, and the support services such as our, our street crew and our water systems and everyone that one that works at City Hall. It's, it's great uh, to be part of such a professional team. We are very fortunate to have Don Lynch with us as our emergency management director. Uh, he grew up literally uh, in this business. His father was the fire chief and civil defense director in Catoosa. And as a young man, he was immersed in the uh, field of emergency response. From there, he moved into Oklahoma County and the state uh, government and filled a number of very important and uh, influential positions in emergency management. Now, he was also very instrumental in the recovery from the mural bombing. Uh, and as a result of that, he has been nationally recognized. He's also certified at the national level in another number of emergency response skills. And as a result of that, uh, not only being on the faculty of FEMA's school in Maryland, but he's well known for giving classes throughout the state and region. We are indeed fortunate to have Don Lynch as a member of our team. In our system of emergency management, the primary responsibility rests with the local community to be involved with making sure that we can deal with disasters and emergencies that occur. But it also requires a partnership, not only with the local community, but with the state government, the federal government, with business and industry, with uh, voluntary organizations such as the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, church groups, other community organizations, and then also individuals and families have a role and responsibility in being uh, prepared for emergencies and disasters. We're very fortunate in Shawnee that we have all of those assets and all of those those. Uh, factors relating to emergency management involved in our organization. We have a great working relationship amongst our city and county organizations and our neighboring jurisdictions, the volunteer fire departments, the police departments, the emergency medical services, all throughout the county work real well together to prepare for and respond to disasters and emergencies when they occur. We also coordinate on a daily basis and work closely with a number of federal agencies that are located in and around Pottawatomie County. 
the U.S. Department of Agriculture is one that comes to mind with all of the resources that they bring to bear because of our agricultural community. And then also weather affects everything that we do. And so we coordinate very closely with the National Weather Service on all things that, that relate to uh, weather operations in our county. We also work with the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, and a number of community organizations to provide for the human services needs when disasters occur. Food, clothing, shelter, all of the, the basic necessities of life these are where these organizations come in and provide support that we can't uh, in the government sector. And we appreciate very much how they can provide those services in our community. In the event of a local emergency, the Emergency Management Office first coordinates with area professionals and volunteers who have the essential skills and tools required to manage the event. If the emergency warrants, Don and his staff have ongoing relationships to turn on the state and even national levels for any amount of assistance that may be necessary. John E's Emergency Management Office relies on more than 60 trained volunteers to assist in the event of an emergency. All of these volunteers have been certified by the Federally Established Community Emergency Response Team Program, or the CERT CERT program. To gain certification, each volunteer must complete 28 hours of extensive training. In Shawnee, we have 65 members of the CERT organization, and that's uh, three years of training, uh, classes uh, spring and fall, basically. Uh, out of those 65 members, we developed uh, what we call the Community Emergency Management Team, uh, Don Lynch, the emergency management director here in Shawnee and Pottawatomie County, came up with the idea that we ought to become more specialized. Uh, we have teams that do search and rescue uh, training and uh, are still trying to get certified throughout the state. We have team members that volunteer for storm emergency operations center work. We have volunteers that volunteer for um, community services where they help with the Red Cross and the uh, Salvation Army and doing their type of work. We have uh, team members that work with the uh, uh, amateur radios. Uh, we call that our non-weather uh, type radio communications. And then we have people that are part of the emergency operations center here, the administrative part. So uh, out of the 65 members, we probably got about uh, 50, 45 or 50 people that have decided to expand their uh, uh, knowledge and go into those particular fields. CERT is the umbrella organization from which Shawnee's Emergency Management Department developed CEMT, an advanced training and response team made up of volunteers who desired more intense training into specific fields to more effectively serve the community in the event of a disaster. In the event of a tornado, our team members are trained to number one, take care of themselves, number two, take care of their family, and then they branch off into the community. If we have a tornado, Mr. Lynch would contact me. We'd start a calling tree. We'd call all of our CERT team members. They, after taking care of themselves and their families, but back to the emergency services, whether it be fire, or whether it be in, uh, the EM, uh, EMS people, uh, we're there to supplement for police and fire. We're not there to take their place. We're there to help them if they need our help. And if they need our help, that's whenever they call Don Lynch, and that's when Don Lynch calls us in Shawnee. It's very beneficial. Melvin Potter has been recognized as the top volunteer for an emergency management office in the state of Oklahoma. Melvin was awarded the 2006 Volunteer of the Year Award by the Association of Emergency Management in honor of this achievement. The only two paid personnel are housed here in the Emergency Operations Center, and that's Don Lynch, the director, and then myself. And we also have um, volunteers who come in and help. It's just a tremendous part of our um, operation is to have those volunteers out there. They can be storm spotting, um, assisting in the Emergency Operations Center, um, monitoring phone calls, um, monitoring weather, uh, radar, whatever. We just rely heavily on the volunteers um, since we are just the two of us in here. Some of the equipment that we have in the Emergency Operations Center is TVs to monitor local weather. Um, we also monitor news stations, CNN, Fox News, and as such. We might have computers that we monitor weather and updates you know, for email from our state office and communications with them. We send reports via email or fax. We have, of course, our phones. We have our maps. We have, um, in our emergency operations center, we have lighted map boards that we can post a um, 
situation report up on and, and just highlight that so everybody in the EOC is able to see that clearly. On a normal day in an emergency management office, we prepare for the events. We make sure our plans are reviewed. We make sure our contact information is up to date as much as possible. There's a lot of things that change constantly and we make sure that you know we have that latest information that we can so that whenever something does happen because it's all a lot of it can be unpredictable that we are prepared and can handle it. Okay, for each event we just try to take the information that we have, the data that comes in for that event and determine what we will need as far as resources and response to deal with that. Um, it could be totally different from one to the next so we just take that and anticipate what we might you know what it might do when it reaches us or what we need to do ahead of time to lessen the effects of it. We have been working with all of our partners in emergency management to look at the hazards that really affect our community because it makes sense to prepare for those things which are going to affect our citizens. And through that process, we have determined that obviously weather-related hazards are important. Uh, not only the spring storms, the tornadoes and thunderstorms, but also winter storms uh, with uh, heavy icing conditions and the resulting uh, potential for power loss and, and for uh, transportation issues relating to that. We also have a hazardous materials, uh, transportation, storage, and manufacturing uh, processes within our community and so at any time there's a possibility that we would have to deal with a hazardous materials emergency as a result of that. Of course a as we saw uh, in the last year or so wildfires are uh, another threat that we have to deal with. We're kind of in the area that's called the interface between rural and urban areas and so we have to deal with those uh, wildland fires that affect our community and those can uh, be severely devastating uh, on agriculture as well. We also have just regular transportation issues with I-35 nearby with of course I-40 coming through here, uh, US-177, State Highway 18 bisecting the county. Uh, those are major transportation routes and we have uh, airfields nearby so we have planes that, that are close as well that are fly over our area so we always have to be cognizant about those transportation incidents that could occur and then of course uh, being close to the state capitol and being involved with uh, uh, some of the activities that take place relating to homeland security terrorism is, is another threat that we have to we've all learned since September 11th uh, about that threat and we have to be prepared to deal with that at the Shawnee Operations Center, the team utilizes radar from the National Weather Service, as well as OK First. The team is able to monitor over 100 different radar feeds from satellites focused on our expanded region. Speaking with anyone involved in our city's emergency management office, it doesn't take very long to realize the importance of citizens' participation in the volunteer structure. We're going to meet another one of our neighbors who goes above and beyond the call of duty by volunteering on our emergency management team. Karen Lyles is an executive in our local industries. She volunteers her time by serving on the local emergency planning committee. The LEPC is an organization formed by the Environmental Protection Agency designed to help communities, like Shawnee, deal with disaster situations, specifically hazardous materials and health issues. Recently, Shawnee's LEPC participated with the Oklahoma Health Department to come up with a plan in case of a pandemic flu outbreak. The Center for Disease Control has audited the state of Oklahoma and found them very well prepared in the event of a pandemic flu or an emergency scenario involving the health risks. And we were the only state in the nation that received a 10 out of a 10 uh, score for that event. Another responsibility of the LEPC is to help track any hazardous materials within our county. So we have reports that are submitted by different industries in the county and our local emergency planning committee keeps track of those reports and distributes that information to all the fire departments in the county. Because of our volunteer efforts in this community, we feel like we have a very good handle on emergency scenarios. 
we have a large support base of people in the community that are willing to help and willing to stand up in the event of an emergency. We have exercised our plans and therefore I feel like we have a very good handle on any emergency situation that may occur in our county. All of the volunteers who make up the Citizens Emergency Management Team in Shawnee are to be commended for their efforts to help in cases of emergency. But neither they nor the city's emergency management staff is the front line of preparation and defense in case of emergency. Individual and families also have a role in emergency management. Everyone should have a home emergency plan and everyone in your family should know what's in that plan. You should have two means of escape from every room in your home and you should know where you're going to meet outside but more importantly if your family is separated you're at work and at school and you can't get back to your home where would you meet to, to link your family back up and you should have a point of contact outside of the community to let people know how you are so, so that your family who's concerned about you can call and find out about your welfare we also encourage everybody to have a 72 hour family disaster supplies kit and this contains non-perishable food, water, emergency medicine, and first aid supplies along with changes of clothing and blankets and some basic tools that you might need to help your family survive following a disaster. In April of 1993, uh, my family's house was hit by a tornado. Uh, so for a few minutes there, we were taking shelter in our safe room in our house and then I had to make sure that my family was taken care of and that our neighborhood was taken care of so I could leave to go and make sure that everything was taken care of uh, within the community so it's really important to have that family disaster supplies kit and that family disaster plan so that uh, in this case I knew that my family was taken care of and that I could go and help the other folks uh, that were involved in our community and affected by that tornado. The city wants to thank all the great volunteers who serve our community on committees and action teams, such as the ones we saw today on emergency management. Also, as citizens, we want to use the information Don has given us to make our households better prepared in the event of a disaster. Until next time, I'm Ian Hutton, and this has been Shawnee Citizens and Government coming together on City Connect.